It's no secret that the Composition API is all the buzz in Vue 3. And it's not just for its amazing readability or pro your productivity. It's also the TypeScript support in people. I love that. Vue 3 router follows the same principles. So working with your favorite router is going to feel awesome as well. So today we're going to be working on top of already existing application. This is something that we have in the works. It's a very rough version of an e-commerce app. You know, I'll tell you a little secret. We are building this to showcase how Ionic can work with Vue 3. And this is going to be something amazing, but this is not about that. I'm just using this application, this very simple e-commerce app to show how routing works. So let's start by adding the router. Obviously, the first step is to install the uh, new view router, view router next. And as soon as we install that with NPM or Yarn, we're going to get into, you know, the how do we set up the router now, right? It's very similar to view 2. Just follow along. OK, this is the app. So the one thing that I want to set up right away is a dedicated file for the router. So inside source, we have router folder and then the router.ts. Notice.ts, I'm using TypeScript, yes. I highly recommend you go with TypeScript as well, even if you don't use all the benefits of TypeScript. Okay, so you know that there are different ways of tracking history in router. Uh, we're gonna use the web history, right? So let's start, let's create history object. It's going to be, here's a new API, create web history. And create web history is going to be imported from view router. Okay, so we have create web history. We're going to be using another API. We're going to be using create router. So some creation right from the start. All right, router is going to be create router and then some object. So this is a configuration option. You see options, router options. I know that uh, I need a couple of things like history. Okay, and this is going to be this history object. So I, I forwarded the history. And then I'm going to use routes. Okay, routes is going to be an array of routes. Now this is very similar to what you already know from Vue 2. So I'm just going to populate some right on the path. Right, this is going to be the root, and then I'm going to use some kind of component, home. And you know, this is all I basically need. I just need to import home. Okay, and then I need to export default router. And now I need to plug this in someplace. I'm going to plug this into main.ts. Okay, I'm going to import the router from router slash router. Ooh. Okay, and now I need to plug it in. Now check this out. Just use router. And this is everything that was required to use <laughs> view router in the application. If I reload it, I'm going to see that, oh, my application is reloading. Now these images are dynamically loaded. So every time I hit that endpoint, we get a new image related to you know, movies or baby or music. So this is kind of dynamic. All right, so this works. And this is how we just set up the view router. It, this wasn't very hard at all, right? Very similar to view two. Now, what's really different is how we access the router from our components. And this is completely different. You no longer have to use those objects and properties, special properties. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we are working with Composition API and Vue Router comes with two, two, not one, two uh, really cool uh, composable or hooks, right? Using Composition API. One is use router. The other one is, check this out, use route. Okay, so you have use router and we have use route. Uh, maybe it's time for us to play with this a little bit, but to create kind of a good uh, example how we can do that, 
we are going to create a new rack, right? Remember, this is a shop, and what we just listed is a bunch of categories or collections. Now, I want to uh, go to this other route that's going to be uh, kind of uh, the list of products that fall under that category. So this route is going to be like something.com slash and then maybe some ID of the route, right? And I'm going to use that ID for fetching. You guessed it, we're going to use uh, the uh, routing matching algorithm. So we're going to apply that ID to a special placeholder variable. Now, this is going to be fun. Uh, so come stick with me. I'm going to go back to routes. I'm going to add this new route for us. Okay, so this path is going to be category. All right, then it's the special thing, category ID. This is exactly what I want. And the component is going to be some kind of category. And here's the one thing that's very important. This category has not been imported yet. And I really want you to dynamically import it. Because category is only going to be one of the routes, just as home. We don't know if people are going to be accessing it, right? So we don't want to load too much data. Now, we could have done the same thing with home, and we should. But I'm just going to leave it here just for the showcase purposes. I highly recommend all the routes to be dynamically loaded. So const category is going to be import. This is dynamic import. The dynamic import statement. Same thing, components slash category dot view okay and i have this one little problem here this is not a dot this should be a comma okay let's take a look at our category okay and don't worry about all this red stuff this is because my vs code doesn't know that i'm using view 3 and then i'm allowed to use multiple root elements because view 3 has this awesome feature called fragments right i no longer need to just use one root element i can have multiple in this example it's navbar in the ion content now let's go back down now, don't worry about all this stuff the real stuff comes in setup right this is an asynchronous setup that uses this await use products you know use products is uh, a hook a composable and how I got to use products and how I created this function, I also explained in this other video right here. Uh, take a look if you want to see. I highly recommend it's about using uh, composable APIs with TypeScript. Pretty awesome. It's not just composition, but how to compose requesting API data using TypeScript. This is our basically our fetch. This is getting products from uh, the server based on the category id okay now the thing is how do i know my category id if i go back to the router this is going to be that variable but how do i fetch it as i said uh, view router comes with some hooks some really really useful hooks one of them is use route okay so i'm importing use route from view router okay the one thing i like to do is I'm, i want to declare that hook right away use route so i know exactly what i'm doing use route is going to give me some data the one thing that i really care for right here is parameters params okay and inside this is going to be an object i need one specific parameter which is going to be category id okay if i save i get some auto formatting done for me and i can go back to the application and click on say movies look at that category slash and then this ugly id which the application uses to fetch some data and this is where i get the soft keyboard on brand you know all of this is dummy data right i can go back i can click on the baby and i get some other information so <laughs> use route was fantastic and now i want to show you the use router function as well but before i do that i am going to cheat just a little bit all right so window i'm gonna declare a global variable i'm gonna say route route is going to be used route okay i am very curious to inspect everything that comes with use route but i am also very curious 
to find everything that comes with the used router. Okay, so window.router is used router. All right, and I'm going to save this. <laughs> oh, used router is not defined. Of course it's not. And I'm going to fix that. No, it doesn't know how to fix it. I know, I need to import it from here. Okay, now, now we work. You're back in business. Okay, I'm going to say the same. The real magic is right here. Okay, we define those global variables. It's route and router, okay? And my console really shows me uh, good information on what I can expect inside. Route dot, you know, I can see the full path, uh, match, meta, name, parameters re redirected from, right? It's like really awesome stuff right here. Full path, I can see the exact path of this route. So use route really gives me everything that I need to know about this particular route. And use router, right, is going to give me information about the router. So some useful things is dynamically adding routes, going back in history, going to a different route programmatically, right? Just access to the history uh, API. A lot of things from the router is going to be here. You know, I'll just use back so I can go back right here. Dynamically went back to the home screen. If you want to know more about what these APIs do, route and router, if you want to dive into more details, I suggest two things. One is experiment. Two, take a look at the source code. There is going to be some documentation inside, so let's take a look together. I'm at Vue Router next in the uh, Vue.js GitHub repository, and I can see a lot of information right here. This tells me how you can create the router, and this we use in the beginning of this video, and then you can learn how to use all the other APIs. How difficult was this? You just learned how to use the Vue 3 router. If you learn something new, come back, report uh, in this video in the description below, or if you have questions to ask, also use the description. I would love to hear about your experiences. If I can, I would love to help as well. Thank you for sticking with me, and I'll see you in the next video. Make sure you like this one and share it with your friends. See ya.